Yo, champs in the making, it's your boy Starmeister and Luab aka the Pichu Bros and welcome to another episode of the Pokemon Chronicles review series. Today, we'll be reviewing episode 16, Love Disc is a Many Splendored Thing. The episode originally aired on September 14th, 2004 in Japan and on September 23rd, 2006 in the US. So, with all that out of the way, let's get started on the recap. The episode begins with a very similar scene as a date with Delcaddy, where Boink and Cassidy are in a restaurant planning for their next heist. Dr. Namba instructs them to steal a love disc in the Cerulean City gym in order to eliminate love from the world. A super fairy tale reason to capture a Pokemon, obviously something only the English dub can think of. The next morning, the narrator begins by saying, Here we are at the Cerulean gym where love is in the air. But in the Japanese dub, it was actually Tracy who was narrating that Daisy phoned him to go to the gym. And for the third time in Pokemon Chronicles, we again again get the scene of Misty meeting up with Tracy at the gym's lobby, but this time she's in her advanced generation clothes. They look super cool on her, but you know what's even cooler than Misty's new clothes? The Pichu Bros merchandise! It's time to amp up your coolness level by purchasing one of these babies. All our shirts, hoodies, and mugs come in a wide variety of colors, so what are you waiting for? The link is in the description below. Not long after, the delightful Daisy shows up and excitedly shows Tracy their new Pokemon, Love Disc. His name is Catherine. Misty and Daisy then say that there's another Love Disc in the pool, whose name is Loverin. Catherine is in love with Loverin, but she is a shy type and often hides from him. But love knows no bounds as Catherine has the ability to act as a compass needle to point to the direction where Loverin is hiding. Catherine eventually finds his love, but Loverin plays hard to get and rejects them without remorse. This causes Daisy to freak out because if Catherine and Loverin won't be lovey-dovey, then they wouldn't be able to perform their underwater spectacular. So, Misty and Tracy are curious at what this underwater spectacular is all about, so Daisy starts explaining. In her imagination, Misty and Tracy play the roles of Magical Mermaid and the Handsome Prince, and using the power of love between Catherine and Loverin, the Magical Mermaid and the Handsome Prince fall in love. That's another win for the Orange Shippers. However, Misty and Tracy adamantly refuse to perform in their show because of their many responsibilities. Out of nowhere, Psyduck comes out of its Pokeball and tries to help Catherine get along with Loverin, but he fails. Soon, a machine captures Loverin and it's none other than Buffy and Cassidy that's behind this mess. Sablight creates a massive smokescreen using Shadow Ball, allowing them to escape in their flying car, bringing Loverin with them. Tracy comes up with the idea to use Cameron's compass ability to find Loverin, as Missy encourages the little guy to do his best to save the one he truly loves. Catherine eventually finds Loverin's location, but before that, Daisy needs to do something first. Because High Speed Hannah's back in town. High Speed Hannah? What in the world is Daisy talking about? It's the character from her movie. She's a real method actress. Let's put this baby in high gear. <laughs> Daisy eventually catches up to Blurt and Cassidy, but thinking she's in a race, she passes ahead of them instead of stopping next to them. Turns out Belch and Cassidy's flying car also knows its way around the water, so off they go. Good thing Daisy comes prepared and brought an inflatable boat, which Tracy single-handedly inflates. Catherine senses Lover inside the cave, so the gang decides to go check it out. But being the competent villains that they are, Cassidy and Brock set up a trap to manage to swipe Catherine as well. They show themselves to Misty, Tracy, and Daisy, which opens the only door for the gang to escape. When they leave, Misty instructs Catherine to use Tackle to break the cage and to do it for the sake of Leverin. After multiple attempts, Catherine finally smashes the cage bars. Next, Misty calls Catherine to bang through the window with Water Gun. After doing so, Leverin finally decides to help and use Ice Beam to create a frozen arc for the pair to escape. Unfortunately, Cassidy and Hutch arrive. No! It's Cassidy and Hutch! And they miss blood. Catherine distracts Team Rocket with Double Team, which gives them the chance to escape, but Cassidy and Bird catch up to them at the edge of a cliff. And what happens next is the most ridiculous thing that I've seen in Pokemon Chronicles. Back to Tracy and his friends, he somehow manages to grab hold of Team Rocket's controller, so he uses it to break out of their prison. Cassidy and Bark still find a way to trap Catherine and Loverin, but Misty arrives just in time to command both Lovedis to use agility to escape from the nets. Misty and Daisy work together to stop Team Rocket, even creating a fun contest combination of Shadow Ice. 
Loverin Sweet Kiss causes Mighty Yenna's Hyper Beam to attack his own team, and the pair of Loverin finish everything off with Water Gun. This episode ends in Cerulean Aquarium, where Violet and Lily were ultimately chosen to play the roles of the Magical Mermaid and the Handsome Prince. One more ridiculous butterfly flop of Catherine and Loverin, and Missy and Tracy happily help in taking pictures during the after show. That's it for our recap, and now for our ratings and reviews. Okay, so the plot of this episode was very substandard. This episode took most of the time revolving around Misty, Tracy, and Daisy chasing after Butch and Cassidy. Pokemon Chronicles has proven that it's capable of making very creative episodes that involve capturing Butch and Cassidy. But this one just feels like an ordinary filler episode from the main series anime. The other plot of this episode was a love story between Catherine and Lovren, and it's another thing that wasn't handled well in my opinion. I just feel bad for Kazarin, like his feelings for Lovren were often abused by the writers to move the plot forward. And Lovren just wasn't likable for the most part, like at least she could have helped Kazarin when opening the cage. Misty and Tracy had had way better episodes at helping two Pokemon fall in love, but this episode just wasn't one of them. Okay, so much for the boring plot, it's time to talk about what I love about this episode, and as usual, it's always the characters. Cassidy and Butch continue to prove that they can be just as fun of antagonists as Jesse and James, and even more competent than them. This episode also had my all-time favorite version of Butch correcting someone about his name. Good job! Yeah, way to go! Well, looky here! <laughs> oh no, it's Cassidy and Hutch! The name is Butch! You thought you Misty's overall character development in the show has always been subtle, and here we see more of her mature side and always taking initiative to solve a problem. She has really grown to be a strong and responsible gym leader. Daisy's comedy knows no limits as she is the main source of laughter and fun vibes in this episode. And finally, I love that Tracy's sarcasm was highlighted in this episode, especially with how he just rides along Daisy's, well, daisiness. Keep going, you're almost there. I'd help you out, Tracy, but as an actress, it's better to observe. Of course it is. He looked like he wanna burst at Daisy, but tries to keep his cool. Anyone who dislikes Tracy is missing half of this world. But overall, I think that this episode was lacking in the plot department and was ultimately saved by the five main characters who gave us an amazing blend of personality portrayals and comedic dialogues. With respect to other Pokemon Chronicles episodes, I'm giving this a 5 out of 10. Another episode with Tracy at Missy's gym? That makes this the third time that we've gotten an episode revolved around that and I'm all for it. If the execution is good, there should be nothing wrong with it. This time around, we even got Daisy joining them for their adventure. It's notable to point out that this takes place after Togepi was released from Missy's party and therefore it doesn't show up here. This was a very average episode at best, showing off Love Disc and the fact that Missy and Daisy both have one now. Another fun fact is that this episode aired alongside the main series debut of Love Disc in Japan. The love story of Missy's love disc Catherine and being in love with Daisy's love disc Loverin was super cliche. The generic love story trope of being rejected and then saving them once, leaving them to be madly in love with you is super overdone in my opinion. Also when they got together and started flapping away, I literally lost it. I thought I was in a fever dream, genuinely. Besides the love disc situation, the characters in this episode were all handled decently. Missy was how she always is and that's not a bad thing. Having Daisy in the main plot of an episode was interesting and I thought it was funny when she was driving the car. Tracy has been the best protagonist of Pokemon Chronicles like always. I ship Tracy with Daisy to be honest at this point. Bonk and Cassidy were fantastic like always, really carrying the plot of this episode and having plenty of funny scenes in this one. However, the plot of this episode was just very underwhelming to me. Something about watching this episode didn't get me invested into the episode and didn't excite me in any way. I wonder if it's because Missy's Love This Never Again made a main series debut so I couldn't connect with it, or maybe it was that damn flapping. Regardless, I'll be giving this episode a 4 out of 10, surprisingly one of the weaker episodes of Pokemon Chronicles, despite me having high hopes going in. So yeah, that was a review and recap for Pokemon Chronicles episode 16, Love Disc is a many splendored thing. If you enjoyed this video, then I highly suggest you subscribe to both our channels, links are found in the description below. For the next episode of this review series, that will come out next week on Blue App's channel, so you're gonna wanna head over to his channel to check that out. Or if you want, you can click the playlist that we made and find all the episodes neatly there. Until next time, thanks for watching and the Pichu Bros will gotta catch ya later. Oh, this is a disaster lost in a
cave with only one pair of shoes and no moisturizer. Oh yeah, doesn't get much worse than that, does it?